Hey Pop Tarts, thank you so much for joining me for this unboxing and first impressions of the Embroidered Forest Tarot. I am very, very excited to look at this deck today and give you just a few of my thoughts and feelings about the very first look through of this one. I've had this ready to unbox for quite some time. I'm going to have to apologise to the creator who very, very kindly asked me if I would like to have a look at it and sent it to me. I'm going to have to apologise for it sitting around gathering a bit of dust for a while. Um, I really do have a terrible struggle sometimes to find the perfect time to unbox something. And I always do say most of the time when somebody asks me if I would like to have a look at something and if I would like to feature it at all, I always say I can't really give you a timeline for when it will be featured. Um, so only send it to me if you don't mind that because I can find it a little bit of a struggle to know when would be the perfect time to start working with new imagery. And I'm not somebody who's just gonna unbox a deck, talk about it on my channel and then put it to one side. Once I've unboxed something and I've gone through and I've really started to connect with the cards, that is because I feel I am ready to actually study with that deck and sort of develop a relationship with that deck. And therefore, sometimes it takes me a little bit of time. But I'm really, really excited to do this today. It's been staring at me for the last few days and I've been thinking, hmm, is this now the time? Does Embroidered Forest want to be a part of my life? And the answer today definitively is yes. So let's do this. I am not gonna be a rookie as usual and have to jump cut to go and get some scissors because actually today I was feeling very organized and I had some scissors on hand. Not only that, but look at these scissors, come on now. I mean, they're like some kind of Venetian mask. I love it. Okay, let's get this done. So I'm gonna go in at the bottom here to cut the plastic. And I will let you know, as much as I can let you know, guys, the quality of the box, a uh, little bit about the little white book, and then cardstock quality, and what I think and feel at first glance um, when looking at this deck for the first time. So the creator's name, I want to say this without butchering it, is either, is Ali either Alicia May Van Vakarkis or Alicia May. Van Bukarkis. I also don't know where the stress actually is in Van Bukarkis because I couldn't find an interview where she says her own name. <laughs> so it could be Van Vukasis and I could have it totally wrong. I don't know. Am I butchering your name? I'm so sorry if I am. That would be that would be adding insult to injury after how long it's taken me to get into this box. So I do apologize. Um, it took two years for this creator to make this totally embroidered tarot deck. What an incredible feat of creativity. And I think there's quite a lot of documentation of this impressive and vast creative process process on Alicia's um, uh, Instagram. So I will leave that down below along with the website where you can check out more about the deck and purchase if you feel so inclined. So this is a lovely feeling matte, sort of got a velvety feel, this box. Definitely sturdy. It's not one that you're going to have to throw away. It's not one that's going to get all dog-eared in a minute. It's got this really beautiful sort of silver sheen on the front um and it says the embroidered forest tarot with the emblem there alicia may van Bukarkis at the bottom on the back it says walk through an enchanted embroidered forest don't mind if i do uh meet the hares they are the pentacles the swans the cups foxes the wands and bees are the swords that's very interesting breakdown of the four suits there the rest is up to you and your intuition where will they take you exciting this is really this is really thrilling i think there's a swell yeah here we go so on the sides you've got the fox there the sleeping fox on the bottom of the deck you've got the bee on the top this is really great isn't it um then you've got here the um the hair you've got a sleeping hair and a sleeping swan in this gorgeous looks like a little a little closed tulip but actually that's a sleeping swan there's the neck just there nestling into the wings how sweet okay it's great to notice that kind of little detail so um the box is sort of a you know in two pieces the pull apart sort of vibe nice and sturdy we go into the little white book it's really beautiful again you've got that sort of beautiful shiny silver emblem there the embroidered forest tarot guidebook so i'll have a little look now at the guidebook and give you a sense of what is in here oh it's a lovely paper okay so you've got a little introduction a little bit about reversals which is interesting straight away 
Um, that's sort of a, an interesting quirk is that the creator has straight away mentioned reversals. Alicia says, I don't tend to use reversals, but as a beginner, I did. When just starting out, it can be helpful to use reversals to get in the right ballpark with the cards and to understanding their many layered aspects. Nowadays, I tend to shuffle my decks upright and depending on the spread in question, I use my intuition to tell me if the card is talking about its upright or reversed meanings. That's very much basically the same journey that I took. So that's really interesting. Um, okay, and then we've got some spreads. Really interesting spreads. Quite a few of them as well. Oh, wow. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spreads at the beginning, darlings. So for those of you who like your little white books to come with some spreads that you can try, you're not going to be disappointed here with the little white book for Embroidered Forest Tarot. I'll give you a couple of examples. You've got Inbox. Oh, okay. So it's one for every Sabbath. There we go. I figured it out. Inbox Searching Candle. Use this spread like a candle in the dark whenever you need quick guidance from higher self. How lovely. Ostara's Golden Egg. Use this spread to get the ball rolling and start any project, big or small. Beltane's Flower of Self-Love. Use this spread anytime you wish to cultivate your self-love and acceptance. You know I'm going to go to Samhain before we move on. Oh, Samhain's Skull. Use this spread to look deep within and work on your shadow. So these are really thoughtful spreads that align with the eight Sabbaths on the Wheel of the Year, darlings. So I think a lot of people will be happy with that. Um, and then we go straight into the Major Arcana. You've got kind of like a full page for each of those Major Arcana cards. No images, um, but I don't suppose that really matters. It doesn't matter to me. And we've got a beautiful font for the, for the Embroidered Forest Tarot, which you will see more of as I do the cutaways of the cards. And then with the Minor Arcana... Oh, this is cute. You've got Let It Be there. Uh, the Bees are Swords. And then, um, yeah, you can fit about four of the little descriptions for the minor arcana on each um, double page spread. So you do get quite a few sentences for each of the minor arcana cards. Stay clever, little fox, it says for the foxes. Let's see what the others are. For every beauty, there is an eye to see it. That's for swans. And then the final suit take a leap of faith that is the hair suit okay so before i move on then i'm just going to clarify for you guys what the four suits are i know for some people there are there are some sort of scruples and issues with the renaming of suits the renaming of the four suits um i tend to find it really interesting i do think that it takes time for me to get used to the deck. It takes an extra step of time for me to get used to the deck. Not always, actually. I think with my experience with the Muse Tarot, which is my main working deck at the minute, I had a very quick switch over because I just found that the names of the four suits were so obvious. There really wasn't that much mental gymnastics for me to have to do. Um, so I, I may do a sort of review or a, um, a discussion about Muse Tarot, or I'll put it in my next card slinger video, guys. But anyway, with Muse Tarot, basically the four, the renaming of the four suits felt so obvious. You've got inspiration as wands, you've got emotions as cups. So it was just so obvious. Um, I think the renaming of the suits with this one might be a little bit more, um, of a, of a sort of mental dance to do. But we shall see. I think it largely depends on the imagery as well. Oh yeah, sorry, that's what I was doing. I was letting you know which is which. So you've got hares are pentacles, swans are cups, foxes are wands, and bees are swords. I don't think that's going to be too much of a dance to do in my mind, so I think that should be fine. Honeybees, as always, there are going to be cutaways as I talk about the cards, so you will be able to see close-ups of the details of the cards as I'm describing my emotional reactions and my thoughts about them as we go along. I'm not going to be showing all of the cards. This is not an in-depth walkthrough. This is literally just an opportunity for me to talk about some of the key perceptions that I have and that's going to be that so if you want to walk through I'm sure there are other places you can go this is not going to be it I'm afraid but I am going to show a reasonable cross-section of the cards from each of the four suits um, you've got the beautiful silver edge there on this deck I really love to see it it is just so so mouth-watering so tantalizing I mean that really does 
look so gorgeous doesn't it and then you've got also this beautiful bright luminous silver emblem on the back of the cards as well with that kind of deep forest green on the card backing too again absolutely beautiful um card stock is fair it's sort of like good playing card stock i, I suppose you could say uh, it's not that really really tough stock that you get that is like postcard stock it's not like that or not even postcard stock it's like uh, it's um it's no dust to onyx tarot style of uh of cardstock right but um it's fine for me i'm not a violent shuffler <laughs> sorry darlings it did occur to me just as i was about to start talking about my reactions to the cards that i didn't really talk much about what this deck is actually all about so i want to read a little bit from the introduction section of the little white book just so you get a vibe of it even though i think the embroidered forest tarot gives you immediately a very obvious emotional picture of what you are going to feel and see in these cards but i'm just going to read a little bit especially because the description from the intro is so rich it says welcome to the embroidered forest of tarot when the idea of this deck first came to me it seemed to be from nowhere and i just could not get it out of my head i dreamed of walking through a green cotton forest seeing rabbits made of shimmering twine birds flying overhead trailing feathers of threaded silk walking between stitched trees with satin grasses and flowers cushioning my bare feet Walking through an embroidered forest became my happy place, my daily meditational zen. I could not hoard this place. I needed to make it a reality and share this with others. That is absolutely such a sumptuous description and makes me even more excited to dive in and let you know what I think about some of this imagery. The very first feeling that I'm getting as I'm going through this deck at first glance and I'm looking at the cards laid out one after the other is that this is such a pretty deck. It's glowing it's really shimmering there's something very special about this because of the use of that incredibly luminous very high silver that's got that incredible shine to it and you will see as i go through the cutaways what i mean but it's almost like i'm looking at a bunch of incredibly sumptuous um sort of custom made christmas cards like really special high-end design that you open and you just feel like so special and so chosen that this design would be sent to you it's beautiful and now i really am starting to understand as i'm looking through the value of having a tarot deck that's made completely out of embroidery so let's get into it we begin with the full where you're looking at a robin a robin is a really important bird for me. I have a couple of robins tattooed on my arm um, and they are representative of love and it's a David Lynch tribute. If you've ever seen Blue Velvet, you understand. Um, so the robin starting the deck for me as the fool is definitely a very beautiful symbol for me just on a really personal level. I'm just having a little look if the little white book says anything. It says a tiny robin, the bird that heralds spring, has laid her eggs in a vintage teacup. She and her eggs are in danger of predation this close to the ground. This is most likely her first laying and hopefully she will learn by next year. The fool, oh wow, okay. So the fool is full of the joys and innocence of spring, but unfortunately this innocence can get the fool in trouble. So actually what is going on with the fool here is that the eggs are actually in danger of being taken by a predator. And that is a teacup that the fool is standing on. Um, sorry, that the robin representing the fool is standing on. So there's definitely, we're accessing the ideas of naivety and vulnerability around the fool. We're accessing the ideas of not knowing better and, and needing to learn. So that is a, a really beautiful first image. I hope you can see through the cutaways the incredible shine and shimmer on the flowers in the fall. Um, and every card like this is the same. They all have these beautiful silver details on. In fact, guys, I will say if you've ever owned a copy or seen a copy of the Holly Simple Tarot, this actually describes, this silver detailing describes what I would have really liked to have seen on the Holly Simple Tarot. Because with the Holly Simple, and I'll do a cutaway here actually to it, you've got the box where there are those incredible silver details, those high shine silver details. But when you open the deck, unfortunately the silver detailing does not extend itself into the deck imagery, which I find to be such an incredible shame with Holly Simple Tarot. And I always wish that Holly Simple, as much as I love the deck and it's a great deck to work with, I always wished it had those silver details on like the box has 
So it was kind of a, you know, a very slight disappointment with that deck. With this, I've got that silver detailing that I want, that I love, that is so sumptuous. And this will look absolutely beautiful laid out in person in front of a friend that I'm reading for. Um, hopefully it will translate quite well to Skype as well for my client readings. It is definitely a very sumptuous object to look at this particular deck. The High Priestess is an owl and I absolutely love it. You've got the stars in the eyes there. It's very intense. I really feel like I'm being indoctrinated by this owl into this kind of high magic. I feel like I'm being invited into this occult astral realm of wonderment. And I love this marbled kind of tie-dye sky in the background behind the embroidered moon, which has got these kind of shots of starlight sort of just punching through it absolutely beautiful High Priestess card. I think anybody who loves the High Priestess card is going to be pleased and infused by that interpretation. And I have to mention the Hermit coming straight afterwards. Now that is creepy. That's scary. That is actually giving me a kind of it vibe, you know? <laughs> um, if anyone's seen that film, you'll know what I mean. <laughs> the clown staring at you through the gutter. Um, let's have a look at what was the maker's intention, the creator's intention for this very interesting looking hermit card. Um, okay, it says here, in the very deepest, darkest heart of the woods, cat eyes wink at you. The lynx is a solitary and rare creature. No one really knows where they go and what quest they're on. It's up to you to fill in the many blanks of the lynx's journey and maybe even take control of your own quest and forge your own path whilst, whilst you're at it. That's very interesting because we only see the eyes there. And so the orange to me doesn't really, it sort of seems as though it's part of this big body, this big orange monster body. But I don't know if that was what was really intended, but I find it very interesting. And again, those shots of silver coming over, um, like bars or tendrils um, in, the, in the forest, provide a very interesting vibe that you are being stared at or that you have just caught sight of something that wasn't expecting you to catch sight of it. And you've been let into this kind of woodland secret, this kind of forest um, mystery. And so that's something very exciting about it. But there's definitely a dangerous element of a hermit as well in this deck. And that will be something interesting to work with. The Hanged Man is an absolutely beautiful card in the embroidered forest tarot darlings look at this this is absolutely splendid i can see straight away that it is a chrysalis but i prefer to the little white book to give me more details it says in the forest a cocoon made from leaves hides its maker a lunar moth moonflowers creep their vines over a silver birch branch as the full moon shines down upon them they are night flowering and enjoying the moon's rays nature works together in so many small little ways independently and together the microcosm is the macrocosm and the little moth will emerge all the wiser for the next stage of their life. Wow. Alicia, you write so beautifully. This little white book is a work of art. The way that you've described what you've done here is really sumptuous and lends itself to a very beautiful, very deep exploration. And of course, I'm going to have to mention this death card because how could I not? This snake winding itself through the bird skull there and those beautiful flowers popping out either side. Um, you know, really just very gorgeous. What fantastic death imagery this is. And I love this very sort of powdery um, coral pink in the background. That's also really lovely for me. As I said, just all shades of pink really do it for me. So that is definitely a really interesting, beautiful death card. I like to see that imagery coming through very, very much. I'm going to move on, darlings, to just a very choice selection, small selection of cards from each of the four suits because I am short on time today, but I really wanted to open this and just share a little bit of my first impressions with you. Sorry about the slight lighting change there, darlings. If you're actually looking at the screen, I had a client and I had something to eat and I had to come back to this because I didn't have enough time to really give the unboxing um, and first impressions justice if I was going to try and pack it all into that little bit of time that I had available. So I want to talk about a couple more major arcana cards before I go on into an exploration of the minors. The first one I wanted to mention is this absolutely stunning temperance card. Um, I'm really enthralled by that temperance card. It, it does a lot for me. It's very sweet, very romantic, very soothing colours in the background. That ombre um, from that sort of very light mint green through into that dusty orange is very much what I'm all about. I really love the sort of linking arms of the otters, the sort of otters hand in hand looking at each other as if it's a kind of wedding vibe. And you've got the flowers on one side and the big waves with the sort of... Um, 
starfish and stuff and the seaweed on the other side so very much this kind of colliding of these two various energies that have a lot to do with power momentum flourishing thriving nature movement life but you've got two distinct energies these are two distinct individual otters coming together in this temperance card so you've got very much that traditional meaning with temperance of the combining and refining of different ingredients to create this beautiful harmony but i just really love the way that's done and of course that silver um, almost looks like scratch pen work that is sort of shading the heart in the temperance card in this deck is beautiful and I also wanted to mention the devil because I really enjoy what's been done here in this particular deck uh, with the devil I like the choice that has been made uh, the devil here is obviously a magpie sort of uh, bejeweling its nest with all of these gorgeous opulent little riches that it's found it's got itself a necklace um, with a really beautiful sort of embroidered cameo on the necklace and obviously just sort of threading the necklace through the nest as magpies are wont to do. And you can see that the magpie has these silver um, devil horns. So there's something here about the temptation of treasure, stealing, that kind of thing that is very interesting. Of course, the magpie has a really, really naughty reputation, very mischievous um, and so I really like the fact that the magpie is representative of the devil here. Of course, I have a great fondness and a great affection for the magpie. And I often do refer to myself as a mystical magpie. Um, but I think there can be a shadow of that too. So I do think it's interesting that the magpie has come through here to represent the devil. Okay, I'm going to move on and have a look at the minor arcana. Now, the minor arcana, I will say, just looking through it, just looking through these um, sort of various four suits... I will say that the four suits look much more uniform and much less pictorially interesting in some cases. I'm going to definitely give it a go and I'm going to go through it and see. Um, I am interested in the fact that each of them are connected to a very strong look and a very strong kind of colour palette. Now, one thing I want to say as well that I didn't realise is that when I read the back of the box to you guys, I said that hares are pentacles, swans are cups, foxes are wands and bees are swords. What I didn't realise is that the suits have not actually been renamed, which I quite like. So what's actually happened is that the suit of swords is still called the suit of swords, but the bees are the pictorial element that show you that you are looking at a card from that suit in this deck. Um, similarly as we go on the suit of wands is called the suit of wands you've got the word wands on the bottom of every card nine of wands ten of wands but you will always know you are looking at a card from the suit of wands because you've got foxes which are representative of the energy of wands so I do quite like that that actually the creator has not renamed entirely the suits which I wouldn't have minded but I quite like the fact that the suits are called swords cups wands and pentacles but you've got these pictorial motifs that sort of remind you of where you are or show you instantly where you are. So let's have a look then at the suit of swords. First of all, you've got this really beautiful blue purple colour that's been used for the background in all of them. And you've got um, yellow flowers that represent the number that you're looking at. And then you've always got at least one B in every card. What sticks out to me that I really enjoy is eight of swords because I very much just enjoy that it looks like some kind of pagan ritual setup, like what you would find a witchy kid doing in the playground if they found a dead bee and they laid it out in a kind of funeral type of formation and it looks very witchy, it looks very magical. I like that particular setup. In fact, I can say the same for Ace of Swords as well. A lot of these, a lot of these ones actually, but I'll show you Ace of Swords now. You've got that circular sort of, um, a sort of uh, a sacred space made out of flowers with the bee um, lying down in the center. You very much get the sense with Ace of Swords that certainly the bee is dead. And so it does feel a little bit funerally and that's in, an interesting vibe for the Ace, or at least that's how I feel about it anyway. But you can very much get the vibe just from Ace of Swords and Eight of Swords, just looking at the kind of uh, energy that is coming through for them. And again, that blue is very interesting. Let's have a look at the court cards. Okay, so Page of Swords is actually an embroidery, a really beautiful embroidery piece. How lovely. 
that's very sweet for ace of swords and i think there's a few other embroidery pieces with the court cards in this deck as well if i look ahead oh yeah it seems like all of the pages unless i'm wrong hang on i'm just going forward yeah all of the pages actually feature this embroidery style with the very sort of ornate framing um, so yeah, Page of Swords is very sweet, very lovely. I find it interesting that the creator has decided to make embroidery pieces out of each of the pages because that is very strong, uh, visually strong. So if you were to use this deck and you got two pages, for example, in a 10 card spread, your eye is really going to be drawn to those pages, isn't it? Because... Um, the, the minor arcana in this deck is more sort of like pips so there is some sort of pictorial element but it is a lot less of a pictorial element than the major arcana it's a lot more uniform this particular minor arcana and so when the pages come along you are going to get a very different vibe because the rest of the courts are all just ordinary b images um so if i show you for example queen of swords um, you can see that there again, there is a, a beautiful embroidered bee with those lovely sort of diaphanous wings. You've got the little crown of flowers, but essentially it is um, a bee just sort of lying there, lying in state, if you will, is what it looks like. So you can see there's a very big difference there between Queen of Swords, which looks quite normal like the rest of the suit of swords and then the page i just showed you where there's this very sort of distinctive embroidery piece that really jumps out at you and catches the eye so i think that's a very interesting stylistic choice which kind of implies to me that the creator of this deck has a particularly strong relationship with the pages in some way or that there is some reason that is distinct to this deck why pages would be somewhat sort of more visually celebrated or more visually amplified and i will definitely look through the book later to see if there is anything on that that would be an interesting thing to know or if it was just kind of a quirk so let's go on now to the suit of wands all of the cards from suit of wands have this beautiful kind of like um dusty pink mottled background to them and they all look the same in that way ace of wands is very sweet you've got this sort of curled up fox in the middle surrounded by those beautiful i think sunflowers uh, it's a really gorgeous, peaceful image. I very much get the sense that this fox is about to rise and, and do some wily business and get that high energy going. So you've got that feeling that the Ace of Wands is the um, initial spark that is about to um, own its potential to become more than just an ember, you know, and to actually start to spread. So that's a really interesting one. I really enjoy four of wands but only because i know what the what the standard imagery is because if you look at four of wands you've got a family of foxes very very sweet underneath this big sort of um uh you know archway the archway is beautiful it's got some ribbons on it it's got decorative flowers on it and there's another archway actually in the background which is an interesting aspect of four of wands in this deck However, I think if I'd never seen Four of Wands before, if I didn't know what the traditional imagery is, if I didn't know that these are supposed to be archways, I don't know if I would know. But maybe that's just me being silly. Possibly it's me being silly. But I very much enjoy this depiction, not only because the family of foxes are so gorgeous, but because I like the fact that there is that second decorated archway. It almost feels a little bit like we're not just there for the celebration and the connection in that moment. We're not just there to signify something important in that moment. We are going on. We are going onward into the journey forward. We are carrying this into future events as well. And so there's something, there's something um, about momentum in there and about tradition maybe, and about how we believe we're all moving forward together, this bunch of foxes, you know? So I, I definitely get that vibe. And I like Five of Wands because we've got these two boxing foxes and that is just very sweet. And it is very much in keeping with the idea of Five of Wands as being kind of clashing fire energies, competition, rivalry, tension, different ideas going in different directions and trying to find 
the uh, the compromise within the energy of that element. Let me show you another one of the pages now, my darlings. This time, the Page of Wands, very beautiful. Again, you've got that cameo embroidery with the beautiful sort of ornate frame. Um, I really like this. I love the fact that there's sunflowers in it. I love the fact that you almost really feel like you can touch the embroidered fox. There's a lot of a feeling of texture that comes through in this deck that is just really delightful to see. And I also will say that I love Knight of Wands in this deck. Um, I love the fact that Knight of Wands is playing with this flower. There is a very playful aspect to it. It's very joyful. It's very child, um, sort of childlike, I suppose. Um, it's lovely. It looks like a beautiful illustration from a children's book. And look at the sass on this Queen of Wands. Uh, guys, look at it. Look at the sass on it. Um, look at the eye makeup that's been added. This, these beautiful big white lashes and gorgeous white. It looks like eyeshadow. I mean, it looks like makeup to me. It's beautiful. A little bit of war paint there. You've got the crown. But even just the pose and the facial expression there with Queen of Wands, I am really loving it. Queen of Wands is not taking anyone's shit today in this deck. Um, yeah, just a really beautiful depiction there. So we move on then into the suit of cups with the embroidered forest tarot. And here you've got a darker, a much darker uh, blue. And you get the sense of depth with this blue and the sense of water, which is the elemental connection there. Swans are the creatures that have been selected to represent uh, cups and to represent that water element. And you've got lily pads and then pink blossoms in this particular suit. So I'll show you a few examples. Three of cups is really beautiful because you've got one of the swans with the arms, with the wings, sorry massively outstretched so you've got that lovely big full wingspan there you've got another swan sort of like swimming towards that that sort of um big outstretched one then you've got one with a sort of partial wingspan at the bottom and you've got these beautiful lines that show the ripples in the water from what is going on from the sort of interaction between these three swans that is happening so that's really beautiful um, five of Cups, you've got the swan sort of with its head over, um, sort of protecting its head and arching its neck over inside the wing. And you can see that it's raining in Five of Cups, which I think very much gives you the, the, the vibe that Five of Cups often intends, where we're working with the energy of wallowing, sorrow, grief accepting loss, dealing with difficulty, going through tough emotions. So it very much does speak to that. But, it, you know, there's a real melancholy and also a real playfulness and a real sort of like children's illustration vibe in those rain droplets that you see. And again, you've got those beautiful ripples to give you that sense that you are in the water. Seven of Cups is beautiful, beautiful, because you're looking at the full reflection of the wingspan and the full reflection of the entire body shape of the swan. So that is really lovely to see. Um, it is uh, somewhat of a departure from the traditional imagery in the sense that I think we're being urged to reflect on the reflection rather than to reflect on the sense of the different choices or the different things that need to be dealt with, which is the ordinarily very traditional and standard meaning of Seven of Cups. But I like that departure. I like the fact that the creator has decided rather than making the lily pads and the flowers into the different choices, and making the swan um, be some sort of like selector for what is gonna happen. Instead, the swan might be just sort of observing their own reflection and deciding on that score what is gonna happen, looking at themselves deeply and saying, okay, this is the next right action. This is the next thing that I need to do. So it's a deep reflection about one's own priorities and it's really an internal assessment of what should happen rather than being sort of barraged by all of these different choices that one could make. And the final um, suit is the suit of pentacles. Here we've got this kind of like earthy light brown color. Um, and there's a lot of texture to the background in this particular um, suit. I very much like the look of, let me have a look. What do I really want to show you? Oh, Seven of Pentacles is adorable. Yeah, Seven of Pentacles is very cute because you've got that very traditional meaning of waiting for the harvest, observing what's been planted and waiting to yield that harvest. And you've got this very cute looking hair sort of looking expectantly at this bush full of daisies. So it does very much nod to the traditional imagery, but there is just something incredibly cute about it. And I definitely couldn't say anything other than that. 
definitely a cuteness to it nine of pentacles look at this gorgeous hair in nine of pentacles all the abundance all the daisies daisies as far as the eye can see and just a very almost like satisfied full-bellied hair lying sort of ostentatiously very much luxuriating in the daisies that are all around which is very much the message that comes through often in nine of pentacles um, so yeah, this has been a really, really interesting exploration, darlings. I have loved showing you uh, a little bit of this deck. I think that it's been um, really an interesting one for me to explore, for definite, very interesting one to explore. And I hope it's been interesting for you to see and to come on this exploration with me, darlings. Again, Alicia or Alicia, I'm not sure which, I'm sorry. I want to thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to look through this deck and give my thoughts and feelings in an unboxing and first impressions. I'm going to leave down below the website so you can get all the information my darlings if any of you feel that this is one that you would like to add to the collection I must say I'm very excited by this deck I'm particularly excited by the majors and I think I'm going to do a meditation with them this very evening and really just get into the fullness of them and what they're all about and then I'm going to lay out some spreads and see what I feel about the colors and the sort of pictorial style um, as I'm doing sort of more full spreads and I'm very excited to see how that goes. Thank you as always to my patrons for supporting me on this journey of continuing to make content for you guys. My patrons make me happier than a bird with a french fry. If you would like to become a patron, if you want access to the discord, if you want to come to movie nights, if you want to get your hands on my love list, my one card riff and other stuff as well, come along and check out the Patreon options. I will leave them down below for you and please leave a comment and let me know what did you think of this deck and what other decks are exciting you lately what what do you think you're going to get next what are you playing with at the moment let me know and catch me on social media darlings i do have instagram i do have twitter i am on facebook i have quite a lovely active facebook page and lo and behold yes i am finally on witch talk so you can go down below and, and add me on tiktok if you should so choose okay much love darlings blessed be